Hello guys, I'm Sandeep. Oh, I'm a physics faculty at Ask Titans, and uh, we are our oh, we are on our chapter, which is so uh, energy, right? We have actually seen uh, one of the session. We have done one of the session on the energies, right? So, what is energy? If you do remember, right? So, energy which tells energy is required for everyone, right? You already know that part, and uh, even consider me as a human being also need the energy. So, which energy we use? Where we do get the energy from? We get the energy from food, right? Yes. So, as similarly, we can say we also use the other energies, right? So, other energies like uh, we can consider the main or basic source or daily life energy we do need. Is our electrical energy, right? So we know that we have seen in the previous session that without electrical energy, if there is a power cut, we know how our life becomes. We cannot use laptops, mobiles, TVs, right? Or refrigerator, ACs. So yes, obviously that electrical energy is a very needful for nowadays for us right now. And another one is uh, we studied is that uh, car. We need to drive the car. So yes, we need the fuel. Fuel means that energy comes from what? Oil, right? Okay, these are the two energies we do require. Right? Then uh, we also talked about uh, electrical cars nowadays. So uh, those are new train nowadays, right? Electrical car, electrical buses are now running in the cities, right? So. Those are also that is also a good solution for our petrol diesel things, right? Now nowadays we know that uh, petrol diesel prices are going high and high, right? So electrical cars, electrical bikes could be a good option for those. Okay, so these are the main two energies we can say we do require, right? One is our electrical energy and one is so uh, let's say fuel for our car, right? Then. We have seen uh, different types of energies yesterday that uh, some of them are uh, renewable energies we said and some of them are non-renewable energies. Non-renewable energies. So which are renewable, right? Energies which we say uh, are not going to end, right? So like uh, the ultimate source is one. Our so sun, sun is the ultimate source, right? So solar energy is uh, our the most prominent energy. Right, but still we can uh, we are not able to use the uh, many instrument which run on the solar right because uh, why we have also seen that you you already know a lot of things about the solar energy that solar energy is not consistent right so in rainy seasons most probably especially you can say when the clouds actually cover the sun what we will do right so now still now we are not able to. Uh, take all the energy of the solar, just consider for running the car or our normal machines, right? But yes, it is nowadays, yes, people started using the solar energies in the house also, right? Remember that one. Okay. But uh, again, the problem is the same. The installation cost is very high for the solar energy, right? Because the solar panels and uh, their maintenance is also, uh, maintenance is not that, uh, that much. But uh, yes, we can say installation cost is very high. So not everybody could offer that type of energy. Okay. Then uh, we also talked about the wind energy. Yes, on the screen also you can see wind turbines are there, right? Big, big, big fans, fans, right? Which are driven by the our wind, right? We can get the energy from that. Yes, actually we convert that energy into um, our normal electrical energy. Even nowadays, uh, some people are also using a small turbine on their terrace, right? Not most probably not for the household, but uh, you can consider for the some manufacturing unit or there, right? People who can actually afford the turbines, right? Again, installation cost will be very high in that case. So yes, they can use that type of energy too, right? And then so which is the major source actually we are using is the fossil energy nowadays right that is oil or uh, let's say natural gases coal so all these are energy are fossil energy but very big disadvantages we have seen in the previous session at uh, that they actually result into pollution 
right? And we also seen one case of acid rain, right? On Taj Mahal also we seen that acid rain caused the chemical reaction between the marble of the Taj Mahal and uh, that acids, right? Due to which Taj Mahal became a little bit of yellow, which, right? Which is not really good thing, okay? So yes, so, but these energies actually are consistent, we can see, because if you fill up the tank in your car, obviously it is not going to uh, run out of the, uh, run out of the fuel at, uh, it is, it will be consistent, we can say, unless that tank becomes empty, obviously we need to fill up it again. But that is at least a consistent energy, we can say. But also it has disadvantage. So every energy has, a, every source, we can say, have some advantages, some disadvantages. But ultimately, uh, after some years, you know, these uh, fossil energies, fossil sources are going to run out. And we know that and once they do, we uh, we are totally dependent on what? On uh, our non, sorry, renewable energy, energy not non-renewable, renewable energies. That is wind energy, solar energy, then uh, water energy, tidal energy, etc. Et so today what we are going to do, we are going to uh, see the major portion of the um, our renewable energies and how we can actually implement those, how the different nations are implementing those right now. Okay, like that. Okay, so in the previous session, we already talked a little bit about the fossil energies. So today, let's talk about the our non-conventional energy, that is renewable energy. Okay, so let's see what we are going to cover today. First of all, hydropower. What is hydropower? Hydro. So what is hydro? Hydro means, is it hydrogen? No. So what it is? It is related to something related to water, we can say. So water energy. How to use that energy? We are going to see that. Then biomass. Biomass, as so name suggests, there must be some biological there, right? Biological means what? You can say animal waste is there. Then no, vegetable waste is there which actually can decompose right so sources which can which can decompose wood we can say those are decomposing things so yes we going we are going to see them then uh, yes we talked a lot about wind energy and we can get the electrical energy from that then now uh, let's say water and tidal energy what is the difference between hydropower and water energy both relates to the water tidal i can understand right tides and the ocean we can say so we are going to see the difference between what is hydropower and what is the water and tidal energies. Then uh, geothermal energy, we also have seen, talked about this uh, in the previous session actually, that uh, geothermal means, uh, thermal is obviously heat. So can I say that geothermal means, let's say heat taken from geo, geo means what, earth? Yes. So heat uh, taken by, taken from earth, we can say, right? Then, uh, Renewable versus non-renewable. Now we already know a lot about a lot about this. Okay. So anyway, so let's start with one by one. So first of all, let's say hydropower. Hydropower means no, let's say from water. Okay? How we can generate the energy from the water. Now, normally remember what we are going to do. There are two types of energies actually we can use. Rather, let's say there are three types of energy. First one is our, uh, which one? That is electrical energy, right? So using all these different sources, actually we are going to convert it into the electrical energy because yes, electrical energy is the most which we use nowadays, right? Then uh, we can say gases, natural gases, CNG, LPG is a biogas, we can say. So there is a second type of gas we require. And the third one is a fuel, that is our petrol diesel, which comes from oil. So anyway, uh, we have to find a way to convert all these energies, all these natural sources of energies into, let's say, um, majorly into electrical energies, right? That is our main target. Okay. So how to convert that, right? So what we can do, now consider this uh, hydropower. We want to convert the energy of water into, um, let's say, electrical energy. So. Obviously, water does not have any protons, neutrons. Obviously, it has H2 has, but it's not like that. It is uh, current is going to pass from that water and we are going to get supply. Right? No, but what we can get from the water, 
we can actually get the potential energy of the water now what is potential energy you ask what is potential energy obviously right so potential energy is the measure of we can say energy which is due to the uh, configuration configuration means what now there's a little bit of technical terms but you must have studied those in the uh, uh, previous chapters right so potential energy means what very simple to understand if i uh, suppose i hold any object like this right at this particular height and in second case let's say i hold it up here what will happen there is a configuration right its position we can say so when the object goes higher obviously it will have potential energy and it tries to minimize that potential energy. i told you that point also in the previous session always remember this point is very important any object any system whether it is water current potential anything anything any object tries to or uh, acquire the minimum potential energy it tries to go to the position where there will be a minimum potential energy right so even consider if you consider the tanks water tanks we do have on our terrace right we are living at uh, home uh, the obviously tanks are at the top right so can we say why we keep the water tanks at the top because because of the height that in you know, a water is going to get potential energy and when we open the tank what happens when we open the tap at home that water from the height is coming towards uh, down it is coming down right okay so obviously it has some potential energy therefore it can actually come down simple because we are not applying any uh, other external instrument there we are not uh, switching on the motor to take the water from uh, upward to bottom but yes if you want to take the water from let's say lower tank to upward tank then yes you will need the external force or external energy that is a motor in that sense right okay similarly now assume if you keep the water very 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 high what will happen it will have the very uh, lot of we can say potential energy and using that potential energy we can uh, uh, we use that potential energy to rotate the turbines right you must have uh, learn somewhere that uh, ac generator right ac generator means what there is a coil and that coil is rotating now in uh, in our study we do use a very small coil but that is not the case right in let's say in this type of turbines when we are going to use a bigger turbines to create the actual energy that turbines are very big like uh, this uh, also we can consider the those fans of the wind that wind is rotating those fans right so motor is very turbines are very very big so obviously that will need a lot of force so for that force the water should also have that much of energy right yes so what they do actually there is storage let me see yes here in this picture you can see right this part is a storage part so water is stored here and you can see that power station is at very down right this is a very big height we can say because of the height the water on the top has a uh, energy and when you are going to open this door right there is a door here we can say when you open that door what is going to flow right when the water is going to flow it is going to provide lot of energy there like this in this diagram you can see reservoir is there it is called as reservoir where the energy is stored like a dam we can say right okay and this is a small gate right if you open this gate the water is going to flow through this let's say canal right which is called as penstock right and that penstock has a lot of energy and now it is able to rotate this turbine right and after that water will go into the river now obviously at the top it will have the have the lot of energy but in the river it will not have that much of energy so actually what we can say that potential energy is getting converted into kinetic energy let's say this at this point that kinetic energy is going to what it is going to rotate that turbine turbine means uh, when you studied the ac uh, generator there was small coil small coil that coil we have to rotate similarly we have to rotate this turbine here right and uh, this is a, your ac generator power in the power house you can say and what happens that ac current gets generated here and after uh, using the cables we can uh, supply this power to 
households or industries, right? So actually what we did, we converted the potential energy of the water into what? Into electrical energy. This is called as the hydropower. So water is the main source here, we can say, for the hydropower, okay? Now let's see. So also this is one of the diagram, which actually gives us the idea, right? Okay, so after that, water is going to flow into the river. Now in the river, it will not have that much of energy, obviously. Okay. So this is uh, some facts here we can see. These countries produce the most hydroelectric power. You can see China is at the top, right? So it is billion kilowatt hours, right? So China is producing almost 850 billion kilowatt hours. So what is the meaning of that? Now, what is kilowatt hours? Consider, um, let's say you are using the laptop, right? So laptop has almost 200 watt uh, power energy, right? Or even you can uh, look at the bulbs. So bulbs mean in on the bulbs they must they uh, wrote the power also. How much power it is going to consume? Consume. It could be 15 watt, 20 watt, 10 watt like that, right? Let's take the example of 200 watt. So your laptop in one hour consumes 200 watt power. So in five hours, can I say it is it will consume 1000 watt or let's say one kilowatt. Okay, so if you run your laptop for let's say one hour, 200 watt power will be consumed. And here you can say in five hours, 1000 or one kilowatt power is consumed, right? So consider you are using the laptop for 10 hours. How many kilowatt you use? Only two kilowatts, right? So all the billings of your, uh, let's say light bill, uh, measures this thing, kilowatt hour. So this is a one kilowatt means one unit. Your meter running one unit, right? So you can see that China is producing 856, not only 856, but it's a billion, right? 856 billion, billion means you can see, oh, let's say, 10 raised to 6 means 1 million. Million means 10 raised to 9. Okay. 856 into 10 raised to 9 kilowatt hours, this much energy China is preparing, we can say, it can produce, right? Look at the India. India is only producing 124.57 billion kilowatt. Okay. And then this energy is segregated everywhere, okay? Then here, um, here you can see on the map of the India where, are, where there are the power stations, right? Most of the power station obviously needs to be near the water so source, obviously some river or ocean, something like that, where we can create the storage, we can create the dam actually, right? So dams are very important, you can see. Everywhere you can see all those are the dams, Koina Dam in the Maharashtra, right? It generates 1960 megawatt power, right? Mega means how much? 10 raised to 6 watt, we can say, okay? Similarly, you can see Bhagirathi River, Teri Dam is there, right? Which has the highest capacity, that is 2400 megawatt. So that much energy is created, right? Okay, the so you can see, so there are many more dams like this and many more power stations you can see on the map also, right? So because of that, we are getting the electric energy and they obviously through the cables, transmission cables, they are going to supply to everywhere. You can see even nowadays, we know even in the villages, uh, there is a lot of, uh, there we can get the electricity, okay? So this is about the uh, hydropower, we can see using the water. What are the pros and cons? Pros means what? What are the benefits? Cons, cons means what are the disadvantages we can say? Pros we can say it is a renewable source of energy. Yes, water is not going to end, right? A lot of portion of our earth is of water. So it is not going to end. Then pairs well with other renewables. So our solar panels or wind energies, right? So we can pair these sources with that can meet the peak electricity demand. So obviously every country needs a lot of electricity, who is going to create it? So major source we can say is hydropower nowadays. What are the cons? Some adverse environmental effects. 
Right? So very less adverse environmental effect we can, impact we can say. We have to create that dam and store the water. So that's it. Similarly, we can say expensive. So to construct the dam is obviously not that easy, right? It is very expensive, very cost consuming. And the lack of available reservoirs. So obviously, as I said, that we can only build the dams and power station near the water source. If there is no source, then it is going to be difficult, right? So these are some uh, information about the hydropower. Now let's move to the next, our next renewable source, which is uh, called as biomass. Now biomass, how we get the biomass actually. So here you can see, these are some sources of the biomass. You can say forestry crops and residues, right? Means in the forest, there are some residues after cutting the trees or crops, we can say even uh, when we use the crops, there are a lot of wastage materials there, right? Those wastage materials. And uh, we have the agriculture crops and residues, obviously. Sewage, yes, we can also use that sewage. Then industrial residues, mostly if they don't have the chemicals inside them, we can use them. Then animals residues, right? And uh, municipal solid waste, we can all uh, we can use all the sources and uh, create the biomass. So these are the sources of biomass. So how to create the biomass there, right? And what is the byproduct we can say? What is the byproduct instead of byproduct? Let's say what is the product, right? And uh, what energy we are going to get by this biomass? Let's see. So this is the biogas, right? Uh, in uh, most uh, most of the village actually. Right, farmers do use this biogas thing, right? So nowadays we know that uh, LPG, CNG we do use for the cooking, right, for the gas. But again, that is also not that is also not affordable for everybody. So instead, in village, what they do, there is one very big tank like this. This is the tank, right? You can see, or oh, let's say this is the ground level. Oh, you can say this is. Let's consider this is our ground level. And this is the gas tank. And what they do actually here, they put all the slurry, animal waste, manures, right? All the wastage. It could be a perishable wastage, we can say, right? Uh, like uh, crops, we, crops residue, we say, then you know, animal wastage are there, fertilizers are there, right? Like this. So they put them into the, this tank is very bigger inside the ground, actually, right? Only top portion of the of that tank or biogas, we can say, is visible. Right? And all this residue uh, decomposes here in this tank. As I said, they, those must be perishable. right? So we cannot put the plastic toys or any material like that. right? No, just perishable material. And they, that decomposes here. And after decomposing, it obviously it took a lot of time. Okay? And then it produces the methane gas. methane gas and that methane gas passes through this point and then we can use it oh, instead of our you know solar power oh, sorry not solar power cng lpg right in a gas cylinder right we normally use a gas cylinder to cook but you can also reuse this right so this is the construction of biogas you can say then uh, then we have the wind energy right so wind obviously we need the turbines there, right? So here is the simple process you can see that the wind are rotated by what? Wind. So wind is rotating those bigger fans. And what is there? Turbines are there obviously. And again, this process is going to be same as that of hydropower. Once we got that mechanical energy to rotate the turbine, even in water's case also, what we did, we actually rotated that turbines. Right? Once the turbine is rotated, then uh, uh, remaining job is your uh, AC generator's job, right? So that AC generator actually, that coil and again that coil is going to rotate and the uh, electrical energy, is, you can get the electrical energy and using this transformers. What are transformers? What are transformers, we can say, though that is the instrument which actually controls the light, most probably alternating current, you can say actually controls alternating current. So to increase the voltage or decrease the voltage like that. Okay. So those transformers 
So there are two types of transformers you can say. This is called a step up transformer. This transformer actually increases the voltage and uh, increasing in that increased voltage actually flows through these wires which are on the towers, right? Which is distributed everywhere in the homes, in buildings, uh, manufacturing company. That wire actually carries a very high voltage there. So that's why they are uh, at a very height, a lot of height there because no one should reach there obviously, right? Okay. And when we get the electricity at the home, uh, there is also one more transformer is connected, right? Sometimes you must have seen, uh, seen some instrument like this, right? We can call this, let's say, as a step down transformer. Step down transformer means what? It is going to decrease voltage. So, uh, in these wires, the voltage is very high, almost, let's say, 100 kilo volt or etc. And what do you, uh, we cannot handle that much of voltage, right? So, in our home, voltage comes only 220 volt. So this is the job of step up, step down transformer that to uh, decrease the voltage. Okay, so this is how the whole electricity flows. And uh, as we have seen, that turbines are the important things that they are actually doing the work there. Okay. okay. Now again, let's see in the India there are these many power plants which use the uh, wind turbines actually, right? So you can see how much energy we are getting, 1500 megawatt maximum, which is located in Kanyakumari, right? Okay, what is the energy, maximum energy we got in uh, hydropower? That is 12400, right? Wind is giving us almost 1500. Obviously, every plant will uh, give the different, they do have the different capacity in Maharashtra, you can say 520 kg, Right. In Madhya Pradesh, red, right? Karnataka, 56, Maharashtra again there. So one state obviously can have more than one power plant, right? So again, uh, we already got the electrical energy from water. Now we collect it from wind and now combine those and circulate everywhere in the country, right? Like that. So this is how the wind energy works. So what are the benefits of that? Now uh, this wind is a faster construction, right? Um, for water, we know that we have to store that water and to store that water, water already have a lot of force. To store that water is not going to be easy, right? So to construct dam, it is very expensive. So instead of that, this turbine is not going to take a lot of cost, right? Only that tower is the important main thing. We don't have to construct any dam. We don't have to store wind, right? Water we have to store, obviously, but wind we don't have to store. So this is the faster construction. And again, lower cost, we can say. And also more durable. <coughs> because obviously there is no maintenance in this. Almost no maintenance is there. Obviously, you can say environmental friendly is. And uh, uh, in future, obviously, this is going to be very good source of the wind. But again, what we can say, what is the disadvantage that uh, you cannot just put the tower anywhere, uh, let's say, near our home. We need the place where the actually a lot of wind flows. Then only we can use that energy to rotate those turbines. Okay, good. So, so let's move to the next one. Now water and tidal energy. Okay, so in case of water, tidal energy, what you can see here is the same turbine which we used for the Mm, wind, we can use those in, in the water, right? So here we can see like this instrument, like this are created. So obviously turbines are rotated. Job is again same. Rotate the turbine, get the electricity. That's it, right? Very simple to understand. So every source is doing the same thing. So our job is to uh, rotate the turbine. So who can rotate the turbine? Obviously any source who has the energy, water has the energy. Right, water means so uh, actually uh, we also seen what is the difference between hydropower and this now water energy or tidal energy. Hydropower we actually built up the dam and etc. This tidal energy we are not going to build a dam. What we are going to do? Just build the turbines inside the water or something like this, which actually have the rotating turbines. Right, that is going to rotate inside the water and electricity we are going to be generated on the surface of the water. Then again we can. Uh, use that energy to 
to transmit everywhere in the country right so this is the tidal energy you can say so there are no lot of tidal plants actually you can see those are some of the plants right uh, in uk there was one tidal plant which has a 300 capacities this raid actually shows you that uh, plants which are uh, in process we can say right so india have the one plan progress right in the gulf we can say gulf area you know capacity is only 50 megawatt okay so most probably uh, yes country most of the countries are going to start doing this thing right basically because uh, compared to hydro power we can say it will take the low cost because we don't have to build the dam right and dam and that reservoir is the very bigger component of the hydro plant which is not required here obviously right here you can see russia russia is almost have the capacity of 87000 megawatt very high right like this okay so these are some tidal plants in the world okay next let's move to the geothermal energy now uh, what is geothermal energy if you do remember i told you thermal means heat and we have to extract that heat from where from hmm, earth right okay and uh, what we have to do we have to create that energy we have to use that energy again to what to rotate the turbine anyway our main aim is to create the alternating current means to rotate the turbine if you are able to rotate the turbine using any energy then it's good right you know obviously we should uh, that energy should be that sources or the manufacturing process we can say should be um, we can say free a uh, cost friendly right it should not be very costly okay so now let's see about this geothermal energy what is happening here so first of all let's say magma magma means what if you dig the earth right you will get the very hot portion right towards the center we know that of the earth there is a very high temperature hot a lava type thing is there right right so this is called as magma actually now we want to take the thermal energy from that magma not easy job right yes then let's see reservoir so this is the reservoir you can say right so here actually we are uh, sending the pipes here you can see the cooled water is pumped into heated rocks where it is converted to steam right so obviously from top surface we want to send the water we don't need any energy for that right very easy because uh, anyway what is going to happen what is going to flow down itself right okay so cooled water is pumped into heated rocks where it is converted into steam so when this power or let's say uh, water is going here this is the reservoir reservoir is same as that of hydro plant we can say so here we can actually what we can do here we can store the cool water okay so this because of this magma right that is the heat because of the earth that reservoir is going to get heated right it is going to get a lot of temperature we can say and all that heat is going to convert the reservoir of the water into steam here you can see so the steam is going to run like this okay to power turbines and generate electricity once we got the steam what is the job of steam now rotate same thing rotate the turbine and get the electricity simple then excess water is cooled and the process starts again so whatever turbine is uh, again what we can say that steam where the steam is going once it rotated the turbine it again glow goes here from this pipe it will go here what is this it you can say there is a cooling tower right so that is that cooling tower is again going to cool the steam and we know what happens if you cool the steam it again becomes water let's take that water again to the reservoir this process continues right okay so like this you can say so this is how uh, we can use the geothermal energy to rotate the turbines okay very simple then then we have the renewable versus non renewable sources now we already talked uh, about renewable sources how to get that right in the uh, non renewable means just yes, uh, in the previous session we have already seen those 
that what are the non-renewable sources and uh, how to use those, right? And what are the advantages and disadvantages? So renewable, what are the sources? Solar, biggest source, but uh, again, not, not consistent. Then hydropower, the main source of the light nowadays we are using, but uh, again, it is costly. Biomass, biomass means the source we, we use because uh, we use actually the waste, a lot of waste, maybe crop residue or animal residue like those. Right. Good source, we can say, or eco friendly source. Then, uh, wind that's the best thing right now, right? Oh, after the hydropower, we can say wind is wind power is generating a lot of electricity and geothermal. We are seeing, but obviously, geothermal uh, also will take a lot of cost. Why? Because you have to uh, prepare all the manufacture all this power plant, and it's not that easy to dig up and uh, to uh, create the reservoir under the ground. It is not going to be easy, right? So obviously it will take a little bit of cost. Okay. So, yes. so but anyway, what we can say renewable energy is the very good sources and they are nowadays giving us a lot of energy. And what about the non-renewable sources? We have seen this fossil sources, fossil energy we have seen in the previous session. That is oil, right? Oil reservoirs are there. We have seen which countries have a lot of oil, right? And obviously those countries, we're going uh, making the lot of money, right? A lot of revenue due to this oil. Then coal, coal mines are there. Natural gas, natural gas is there, right? So we have seen these three things yesterday uh, in the previous session. So these are all non-renewable sources. Okay. Also nuclear energy is also there. We are going to see the uh, this nuclear energy in the next session actually. Okay. So when we say the renewable sources and non-renewable sources. What is the difference? Obviously, we can say renewable sources are eco-friendly. They do not do any pollutions. But what about this oil, coal, natural gas we have seen? Yes, a lot of pollution is there, right? Which is unwanted and which can create the acid rains there. We know that part. So we have seen that. Okay, good. So, so let's move. So this is the whole uh, theory part of today's session. Now let's try to solve uh, some questions here. So first, in a hydro power plant, hydro means that water plant, right? We are seeing that part. But uh, what happens? So first option says, potential energy possessed by stored water is converted into electricity. Is it right? Yes, we said that. That potential energy at the water at the top, which where the water reservoir is there, has a potential energy. And uh, we convert that energy into what? Electricity. So obviously this is correct. Let's take the other options too. Second option says kinetic energy possessed by stored water is converted into potential energy. No, stored water does not have any kinetic energy, right? Then uh, electricity is extracted from water. Electricity is extracted means actually potential energy uh, gets converted. We cannot extract just uh, the electron. We cannot move that electrons in the water. So again, this is not right. Then uh, water is converted into steam to produce electricity. No, that was the uh, geothermal, right? This is geothermal case. Like this. Okay. So first is the option. Then, which is the ultimate source of this energy? Obviously, so fossil fuels are non-renewable. We know that they are going to end. Uranium actually is uh, in the nuclear energy. We are going to see that in the next session. And uh, sun, obviously, sun is not going to die, right? In your future, obviously, right? So we can say sun is our ultimate source of energy. Yes, water is also abundant. Water is also there, but it is not easy. Most of the water in the ocean. So we cannot build the dams on the in the oceans, right? That is not feasible. So sun is the pure and ultimate source of the energy, which is actually providing the us energy, let's say free of cost, right? Only problem is that installation of the solar panels and all those things are not easy. Therefore, we cannot use the solar energy everywhere, but yes, it is the ultimate source of energy. Then, 
which of the following forms of energy leads to least environmental pollution in the process of harnessing and, and utilization right so let's say first of all nuclear energy when right? studied about it but nuclear energy oh, actually have the radioactive radioactivity is there right like uranium we have seen in the previous question so there is a radioactive element is there that thermal energy when we use the thermal energy actually what we are doing uh, we are burning the coal or we can say wood so obviously it will cause not a lot but a little bit of environmental pollution and solar energy is solar energy is there is no pollution because of solar energy geothermal energy is again we can say geothermal is also eco friendly but obviously it is going to do there is some uh, vapors or some gas particles will be there uh, due to that tower we can say right now we have seen that bigger tower there yes here you can see some pollution will be there so solar energy is the purest as i said it is the purest form of energy and which is the ultimate source okay chalo so this is the second part second session of our chapter of energy which deals with the um, our normal energies right we can say renewable energies or non conventional energies right which are eco friendly also okay so in the next session we are going to study about the nuclear energies and uh, how can we use those or we can get the energies by the nuclear reactions right like those things okay so anyway, so there is a theory chapter obviously so you have studied a lot of physics okay right? so this chapter is not that difficult for you guys so still if you do have any questions please put them put them uh, into the forum so we can solve those queries okay so so anyway so we'll stop here thank you very much have a nice day Bye.